it's important to our community to host a public veteran service each year to honor and remember our heroes of war, uh, those that have fought, those that have passed, those that are still living, and those that are still fighting for us. It's important for us to honor them and, and take the time to, to remember. When I came to Cherry Hill Village, I met a lot of residents who were connected to the legions, who were part of World War II, who had serviced our country for years and years and was a grand part of their life. I noticed in the stories that they told me and the information that they shared, the importance of, of these events in their lives. It's important, it's important to remember uh, it's important to remember the sacrifices, to reflect on, on what these veterans have gone through. Um, it, you know, those events galvanized the Commonwealth and galvanized the nation. Um, and in the same way, those values um, galvanize our community. And so it is an important part of our history. Um, we enjoy, I think we have roughly about 75 um, um, vets and, and, and service personnel who, who live with us and hearing their stories and sharing those stories with the next generation and even two generations uh, is really, really important and it brings together, um, brings together uh, a community and a recognition for, for what they've done. I enlisted in the military in 1956 when times were hard and uh, no jobs were available. And uh, it's a good chance to get out of, the, out of my hometown of St. Catharines and see the world. I'm one of the uh, Cold War soldiers from 56 to uh, 76. And fortunately, we had no wars at that time, but we done a lot of peacekeeping duties around the world. That's right. And we served in uh, Germany uh, for three years with the family, and Alaska, Jamaica, uh, been to the East Coast, West Coast. We done Arctic warfare, jungle warfare, chemical warfare, uh, okay. tactics, uh, aid to civil power. Anything and everything where a soldier, a peacetime soldier, would be involved. I wasn't really involved in active service, but I was a teenager. Maybe before a teenager, I was 11 years old, so I wouldn't classify myself at that age as a teenager. But I remember very distinctly. My mother, father, and brother, sister were sitting around the fireplace listening to the radio. And Neville Chamberlain, the Prime Minister of Britain, came on the radio and announced that Germany and Britain were at war. As a child, one does not know what war is about. I was a, an ambulance driver for a while during the war. That was quite an experience. And uh, as I say, it was a war office <coughs> mail van. I went from London to the West Country one day. We stopped at various. The uh, war office took over a lot of the stately homes, and we and there were we had to stop at all these stately homes and pick up different war office mail, and then we take it to London to the war office there. So that's kind of an interesting job. I was 17 when I enlisted. And I, the reason for the enlistment is uh, I didn't uh, 
get along too well with my family, especially my dad. My mother was okay, but uh, no, it's uh, he not, he wasn't a very good father to me. So uh, that's one of the reasons that I joined the army. The true inspiration behind this film is our veterans, our people of Cherry Hill Village and the need to document their lives and their connections with their families. There's a great need for it because we don't ever want to forget. I was a good foreign mortarman, a fire controller, and uh, at the, the military, or the government changed all the regulations and trade codes, and because of my trade, I had, was sent up training other kids how to become, do my job and uh, without any pay and uh, that kind of fell apart. Now that weapon we don't have anymore in the, no. in the infantry, but it's it, in the artillery. But at that time, at that time I remember when he came home one time to say he was going again and it would be for four months and I, I flippantly said, are you the only man in the whole Canadian Army that can do this? Well, as it turned out, he was. Not really, I mean. Well, you were the only group four. The only one that they had my phone number. <laughs> that too. Fortunately, I, I, before I joined the forces, when the, when there were air raids, we used to sleep under the dining room, ta under the dining room table. <laughs> we did have basements in England to go to, so sleep under some big piece of furniture. My mother slept under the dining room table, I slept under the piano that we had, the grand piano. So uh, <laughs> that's quite something. My husband was a veteran in the Second World War. He was 11 years older than I, and he passed away when he was 78. So I've been a widow for 20 years. My sister's husband, my sister wasn't in the war. She, was, she wasn't able to go in. She had endocarditis. She had a heart condition. She wasn't enlisted. But my brother-in-law, he was, he was in the war. And um, that's, he's passed away too. Most of my friends and my have all passed on. I'm, I'm one of the fewest left. Seventeen of the Jonas Czars from London. Uh, that is a, a tank unit. And in that tank, to begin maybe with it, it weighs 38 tons. It's all steel machine. It takes five people to operate. It's certainly in the front line because if one gets hurt, they can always rely on getting another person to take it over. On D-Day, 6th of June of 1944. One tank that we were, I wasn't in it. I was in that one tank, rather. And uh, anyway, when when you're in a tank, you can't, and it was quite early in the morning that we went across. So uh, little we knew, only the commander knew, Five tanks out of six and one of them and only our tank didn't make it to the beach. We were left behind in the water. I was in a train going up to London once and there were the doodle bugs. Probably it was, was in the war, heard about the doodle bugs. There were pilotless planes that the Germans sent over and they had a loud buzzing noise and those 
buzzing, then the engine would stop and then they'd plunge to earth and blow up if they were like a flying bomb. And I remember being in the train and this thing was flying along beside us. Fortunately, the train went faster than the bomb existed. So. I'd be fast asleep in bed. <laughs> and and I, when you're young, you don't realize it. You've got to get up during the middle of the night. My mother would say, come on, no dilly dallying. Come on, get up, get up. And of course, we just threw on whatever we could on top of our pajamas and went downstairs to an underground shelter, which was below the building. It was a dugout. It was earth on the ground. There was no, it was no fancy basement or anything. It, that's just how it was in them days. And we always had to have our gas mask with us. Not that I needed the gas mask, but it was a precaution in case there was gas. Now that's when I was an ambulance driver. Um, before I joined the forces, I was an ambulance driver, what they called ARP, air rape precautions. And that's me in my uniform. And that's me with my gas mask on. We used to have to sit with our gas masks on to get used to them. Fortunately, we never had to use them. <laughs> me and my sister, my nanny. So. The poppy means a lot to me. Always it's meant a lot to my family in general. My grandfather would share stories with me about the war and his experiences in the past. And the poppy is always represented to me showing respect and dignity and honor to those that have fought for, for us, for what we have today. And holding Remembrance Day celebrations like our veterans event at Cherry Hill every year is truly, truly important to our community to keep that celebration alive and that appreciation alive in our community. It's a, a symbol. But, uh, it means to, we have to remember. Definitely to remember. We remember. By Presumably we remember the wars because we remember of the wars and so on. And for the time he was in the military, we now remember old comrades. Yeah, that have uh, long gone, that uh, have passed on, and uh, we've lost a few. Yeah, we are not in war time, but we still lose soldiers. The poppy, to me, is a remembrance of all the soldiers and all the world wars: First World War, Second World War, Korean Wars whoever the veterans are, they are the ones who I feel the poppy should be dedicated to because of what they did for us. They went and fought so we could have the freedom we have today and never ever forget what these men went through to give you and I the freedom to enjoy this beautiful country that we are in today. The poppy means sadness and gladness. It's a beautiful flower and it reminds you of all the good times but also the sad times. And it's a very dramatic flower and it has a dramatic meaning. It means a lot, like it does to all of us veterans. So what do you want the younger generation to remember? Mm. Uh, remember not to forget and to be vigilant and pay attention. I want you to remember that we are all human beings. We all feel fear. We all feel emotion, 
we all feel heartache and we all feel what it would be like to lose a loved one. Well, that's a difficult, difficult question really. Uh, one doesn't even want to think about wars. As we all know, um, um, the vets do just an incredible job of, of putting this together, the vets within the community. One memory really stands out for me. Um, we invite the schools uh, in the neighborhood across the street to attend. And there was a moment uh, a couple of years ago where all the kids were sitting uh, on the floor and there was a vet sitting in a chair um, talking to the kids and connecting uh, about the stories and, and the experiences that uh, he had, had gone through. And it occurred to me, you know, what a what a magical moment that really was and how rare that is. And so, you know, it, it, it warms you to, to see that and to see the kids paying attention and asking questions um, and, and the vet sharing their stories uh, of sacrifice and, and, and commitment. And that will, I think, will always stick with me as, as um, you know, key reason to continue to remember and continue to support these vets.